Hello, my darlings. It's ALB in Whisperland here. Today, we're going to be doing something really fun. We're going to restore a vintage toy. Have you ever heard of a toy called Little Pretty? This is a toy that was released in both 1990 and 1991. So, since the mold was created in 1989, I kind of think of it as an 80s toy, but it is technically a 90s toy. Little Pretty is kind of, in my opinion, one of the more underrated toys of this era. A lot of times we think of, um, well, commonly people think of My Little Pony, or Keepers, or Lovely Lady Locks. I mean, there was just a whole genre of toys that came out around this time that were fantastical, really special and pretty. And they had a lot of similar materials. They were usually made out of this vinyl rubber type body with long, beautiful, brushable hair. So today we're going to be working on this particular little pretty. Uh, this one is called Mimi. She's a little worse for wear, as you can see. She hasn't had a day in the sun for a while. She needs a little bit of work before she can relive her glory days, in my opinion. So we're going to give her the full treatment, the full uh, spa day for toys. I really love this line of toys, but um, up until now, I haven't owned one. This one is called Mimi. And I was really interested in Mimi here because uh, I think like a lot of pet owners, we don't really call our cats by their names. We have Mei Mei, who if you watch videos on this channel, you might be familiar with Mei Mei. We never seem to call her Mei Mei. It's always Mimo or Mumu or Mimi. Mimi is a pretty common one. So the fact that this little pretty cat is named Mimi and it's such a cute pink cat, it just felt kind of meant to be. And that's why I want to give this toy, like, the spa treatment of its life. And I thought, I should show you guys how I do this. I don't have that many vintage toys, but the few that I do have, this is step for step what I do to give them a nice bath and so that they can sit beautifully on my shelf and I can display them with pride. Before we get started, um, I'm going to show you all of the different products that I'll be using today. If you want to do this at home, you do not need to use what I'm using. Uh, you can use what you have. I'm a big fan of using what you have available to you. But if you're new to this hobby, you might not know kind of materials you need, so I'm just going to show you what I use. I'll start by showing you some of the liquid products I'm using today, so this right here is just dish soap. You would be surprised by all the things that dish soap can do with re like restoring toys. It's kind of magical. I rely on dish soap a lot in this kind of department, so it's usually my go-to. I also have some hair conditioner and shampoo. 
This is not um, fancy conditioner or shampoo. I personally wouldn't be using like super nice shampoo and conditioner for this, but um, that's just me. So I have some shampoo in here and some conditioner. You don't really need very much of each, but I do find that it makes a difference when trying to clean out um, just dirt and grime from vintage toy hair to actually use, you know, hair related products. So some of the other things we'll need. Um, these are melamine sponge, melamine foam sponge. You don't necessarily need to um, get the brand named one, but you can if you want. So the end of this, it was like one big foam sponge and I like to just cut pieces off. Um, I find that it makes it last a lot longer because when you're using this, it kind of dissolves in your hand. Now, I do want to say, if you're doing a toy restoration to a vinyl toy um, that has, like My Little Pony, kind of, they have um, like a cutie mark or they have painted on eyes, makeup, etc., you really don't want to use these sponges on those parts, but these can be really good for getting out stubborn stains. <laughs> so I do like to have them handy. They're also really good for cleaning sneakers, but that's not today's video. I have a toothbrush. I just got this at the dollar store. Um, what I usually do like to do is use old toothbrushes um, that I'm no longer using um, my teeth and then that way I'm kind of repurposing. You just have to be careful that there's no toothpaste behind because some toothpastes have like bleaching agents in them and you wouldn't want to use something like that on your toy that you're trying to make look new again. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I just got a new toothbrush that uh, is now going to be officially dubbed my toy cleaning toothbrush. I'm also using a hair comb. This is just a rat tail hair comb. Um, I'm going to be using these. You don't need to necessarily use these. Um, they are like a wire sponge um, like that's bendable. They have wire in them, and they're usually used for um, plants, like wrapping around plants. You can get these at the dollar store or at um, hardware stores in the plant section. Um, I like to just kind of make use of what's available to me, so I'm going to be using these in place of hair curlers because they're really small. They're like the size of straws. And I have just cut them into smaller pieces, so I can kind of use these like hair curlers. And to that end, I also have some really tiny hair clips. These are just like little butterfly clips. Remember when we all used to wear these kind of clips all the time? So these will be used to secure the hair this onto the little um, wired foam to make it easy. You don't have to do it this way. This is just uh, my method of what I like to do. And it's pretty cost friendly, so that's good too. In addition to this, of course, um, I have some bowls that I'm going to be using to um, better illustrate for you cleaning this toy. Of course, you don't need to do it this way. You can just um, plop your toy down right inside of a clean sink and get to work. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, it's just a little more fun to do it in a bowl. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, let me make some room here so that we can get going on this. 
Okay, Mimi, let's breathe some new life back into you so you can have um, an exciting new clean life again. So what I'm going to do to start, I'm just going to move her back a little bit for a second. You can see um, there is some dirt and grime kind of just like ambiently coming off of her, so I've been trying to keep her on a little towel. I've got a little bowl here. I'm going to put some water into it. Not filling the bowl, but just enough to work with. And right into the bowl you go, Mimi. <laughs> this is going to be quite the process. I'm just going to like Put some water on her. Now, I'm going to keep a paper towel nearby just in case I need it. Let's get her kind of with a little bit of water already. She's like, there's a lot coming off here. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get to work with my dish soap. And with a toothbrush, I'm going to apply some of this just directly on her. Give her like a little kind of bath with the dish soap. This is going to be one of those processes where things have to look bad before they can look good. But that's okay. Probably what will happen in my experience of doing this is that there will be a lot that comes off her um, to start with, but then there's some deeper, harder to remove stains that will take a little more time. But we're just going to kind of start with this first coat of dish soap, and I'm going to really try to get it into the little, not follicles, but like, you know, the little, um, base part of where the hair is coming from in the toy, just to really permeate and get in there. I quite like this process because, well, first of all, there is a lot of satisfaction when you can make a toy look beautiful again. But also, I think when I was young, I must have liked giving my toys a bath a lot. I think that was like a fun activity. These are some of the stains I'm a little worried about around, like, the, um, little grooves in the plastic, and also, I'm not really sure what these are, these stains in here, so. We'll see what we can get off with just the dish soap, also in the hair. There's quite a lot of dirt in this hair part. The water is already satisfyingly dirty. And I'm going to try to be really careful around her cutie mark right here. Because I really don't want to take the paint off of that. As well as the uh, makeup on the face portion. It's not real makeup, it's really just paint applied, but you know how it is. We'll call it makeup because for her, it is makeup. These little parts I can tell are going to be kind of stubborn in the base of the hair. Probably 
probably gonna have to run this under the tap for a bit too, but right now we're just doing our first run through. Sometimes you need to scrub and rinse things a couple of times through to really get everything. Now you have to be careful with certain toys for example, My Little Ponies, because you don't want to necessarily submerge them in the water because they can have metal washers inside holding the hair into the base of the body, which if it's, um, you know, got water in it that can lead to rust and mold and other things that will discolor the toy from the inside out and that's the kind of damage that once a toy has that kind of damage you really can't fix that it's a very permanent type of damage and you just have to kind of do your best at that point, but it doesn't, it's not always a good prognosis, you know. Mimi has like these cute little bangs, so I'm hoping we can breathe some life into her and style her hair well. You can really see here how using a soft toothbrush and just doing slow movements like this can really help. I am also going to use shampoo on her hair, but this is just kind of our first walk through around the toy, getting soap into crevices. I can tell we're going to need to do more than one round of cleaning. This is not a simple, simple fix, but I, I have hope for her. I know that she will get to have some life breathed into her, which makes me really happy. There's all kind of like dirt particles in her hair here, which I'm probably going to need to like actually comb out. You can see a lot in here. And that's the kind of thing also that rinsing will help with. Some of these stains I was kind of worried would be extremely stubborn. Sometimes just soaking things in dish um, detergent, I guess, you know, dish cleaning liquid, you'd be shocked by what will come out. I also use it to clean jewelry too, and it really just surprises me all the time by what it's able to do. Alright, so I don't want to keep rehashing the same dirty water. So I'm just going to give her kind of a quick rinse in a bowl. Just rinse her a little bit. Like this, and a lot is coming out. As you can probably already see. Give her a good rinse today, Mimi. You're gonna have a brand new life. I'm just kind of using my hands here to encourage the dirt to really break up. Um, she's looking fantastic already, though. You can really see. She's going to have a beautiful future in front of her once she's all, I almost said de-loused. She doesn't have lice, she just has dirt. 
but like that's essentially we're, we're giving her like a bubble bath here and she's gonna really live up to her namesake of being a pretty kitty I think this is all kind of matted together you have to be kind of careful with these very plasticky fibers because um, if they're exposed to certain heats, they can just melt. So I'm just using a lukewarm water here. You really would not want to use like a boiling water on a toy like this or any, really any kind of toy because um, the plastic in their hair fibers can actually melt from the boiling water. Sometimes it seems like a good idea to use boiling water on things to clean them because, you know, boiling water kills bacteria and things like that. But a lot of these toys, it can literally just melt them. So in that case, you want to use really good dish detergent or antibacterial liquid, you can use that too if that's a concern. Um, but you would want to avoid a boiling water on the toy, especially a vintage toy, right? Like sometimes these can be pretty rare finds or um, maybe not, but they're just special to you because of being important from your childhood. So, we want to honor that and use special attention and care. She's looking really good, you guys. Look at her already. Almost all of the main body dirt has cleared up quite a bit. I'm still seeing some stubborn parts. My main concern right now, no pun intended, is her hair. It still does not feel clean, to be honest with you. So, I'm going to go ahead and rinse her in the sink, and then we can try using some shampoo on her hair, um, because I think that might work a little bit better for her. After just rinsing her off, I can already see her as if she was like a brand new toy again. It's honestly shocking how much, like, dish detergent can remove from surface stains of toys, but I don't know if you can tell, her hair still has quite a bit of kind of grime in it. It's hard to explain. It's like a sort of grimy residue. So, I'm gonna go ahead and apply shampoo pretty liberally through um, all of her hair and give her a good soak with the shampoo and see if that helps any. I'll probably put conditioner in as well after. Obviously, this is not exactly how I would be applying shampoo to my own hair, but with the toys, it's a little bit different. Her bangs look like they could be really cute, so I'm hoping that I'm able to style them. Most of the grime feels like it's in... Oh yeah, you can see it. It's like in the base as well her hair, so I'm hoping I can get rid of it. This is really where, like, having, um, the toothbrush helps because, like, there's no way I would be able to get into these tiny spots with just my fingers, you know? Now, some people, of course, might just not even care about getting all this tiny little dirt and grime out of her hair, but to me, I don't know, to me it's noticeable. To me, it, it like stands out 
and it could be the difference between like a toy that looks absolutely pristine, like collector's edition kind of quality, and like one that just looks a little bit dull. And like, not that there's anything wrong with a toy looking dull, like a well-loved toy is something special. Look at the dirt coming out. But, you know, to me, like, we can kind of it sounds silly, maybe, but well, we can kind of honor the things around us by taking care of them well. And like, I really love these kind of vintage toys. They're really special, and especially ones like this are kind of hard to get a hold of. So, I want to honor that and do the best I can to give her kind of new life again, you know? Yeah, there's like something, some kind of residue. For some reason, certain types of like crime just stick more in hair fibers. Right, I'm gonna put some in her tail as well. Get a little more shampoo. By the way, if you're curious, these tiny little jars that I'm using were actually little, like, jam jars or something I got at the dollar store, but, um, they had different lids, but I spray painted them a different color, because I thought that would be cuter. So now I'm just using them, and they're really cute. I don't know. I might do something else with them after. There's like a lot of dirt on this toothbrush. It's all in like the roots, like the fiber. I'm trying to get that all the way through the hair. I can tell, oh, there's like a big clump of dirt in here. It's gonna, she's gonna need some brushing, I think, with the conditioner as well. That's the next step. We'll get there when we get there. For now, we're just trying to encourage all of the grime to come out. I don't know if you can tell, but like, even though we already washed and rinsed her already, like, just from this, the bubbles are turning a different color. They're kind of turning slightly a dirty color because they're still trapped grime of dirt of some kind. I feel like it must have some kind of oil base that it stayed in the fibers. But it's coming out, which is good. So I have faith. But I think I'm going to go have to rinse her out again see where we're at. If she's in a good enough state that I can put some conditioner in her hair and try to brush through this little rat's nest. It's kind of all matted together. Let's, let's give her a rinse and let's see. I'm feeling really hopeful because through that rinse, a lot came out of the hair and I was expecting especially hopeful when I noticed that her tail was getting its natural factory set curl back into shape just from rinsing all the grime out, which is like a really good sign. Um, there are still some stubborn stains in the cracks here. I guess they're not cracks, but they're just like um, there's like a date on the bottom, what does this say? Yeah, 1989, because that's when the um, original mold was made by Mattel. So there's just some dirt, I'm not even really sure if it's gonna show up on camera, but I'm going to use, I'm gonna put a little water in one of these bowls, and I'm gonna use one of the melamine sponges. 
that. Just to see if there's, you know, any hope of getting that out. I don't really know if it's going to be that noticeable, but... So I just have to put a little water in the sponge, like so. And like I said before, you really don't want to use the sponge anywhere on the face here or here, which is the cutie mark. This is the kind of thing that maybe doesn't bother anyone else, but kind of bothers me. At least it makes me feel better if I know I've, like, tried my best to get all the dirt and grime out. Kind of a no stone unturned kind of thing, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, you know that you're doing the right thing when there's, like, a little bit of dirt on the spot. And there is some yeah, on the neck here. It's just that um, it sometimes is too abrasive to use it on the face, and it can take the paint out off. But it's little parts like right in here that dirt tends to get trapped. want her to look her very best. It's probably as good as it's gonna get. She has a little mark here. Alright. Not too shabby. Pretty good. Before I rinse her again, I'm just going to put a little bit of conditioner through her hair, actually. And this will be our final rinse. Just have a little conditioner in here. And I'm going to use my little toothbrush again. Very handy in these situations. And let's just go ahead and put some conditioner or through the ends of her hair. Now you will find, if you are restoring your own vintage toy, that there are times where you simply have to trim some of the hair because it can be beyond repair and it may be fried or heat damaged or, you know, a whole array of other things that can happen to toys. And some people are, you know, kind of like, oh, under no circumstances should you ever trim the hair. And that's fair. They can feel that way. You know, all collectors feel differently about what is the proper, I guess, restoration of a toy. Myself, I wouldn't really want to trim very much hair, but like if there was a major issue... I wouldn't feel bad to trim like half an inch of hair from the bottom right here. Um, I don't think I'm going to need to with this particular toy, but to me, it, it will look better if you need to trim off just like a little bit because of an issue rather than just getting a little more conditioner here rather than, um, it on and have it not look very good, have the overall effect look pretty unkept. I would rather have the toy look clean and polished. To me, that's a little more important when it comes to like giving a toy new life. But that's just my opinion. Again, some people are very much like you should never alter the toy even if it's got damage, so everyone's opinions are different on these types of things. Alright, just 
squishing the conditioner in here. And I'm gonna go now give her final rinse, I'm thinking. And then hopefully we'll be able to comb through some of this hair and like get some styling going on her hair. I feel hopeful about the tail because already seeing her factory curl coming back in, but we don't have very much happening with the hair on her head yet, so um, we may need to be a little more aggressive with the styling on that, but we'll see how she is after this final rinse. So here's our girl, fresh out of her final rinse, and I have to say I'm pretty uh, happy with how she looks. Um, her hair still needs a bit of love, but, um, and I'm just kind of pressing it down a little bit, a lot, a lot of the grime came out of her hair. I'm sure you can even tell by the color. It's now like this really nice soft kind of peachy pink, like a dark peach. And her body looks fantastic. Like almost good as new, so I'm really happy about that. It's interesting because the Pretty Kitty and Pretty Puppy toys, they are somewhat unique from the um, My Little Pony toys because they have movable heads. So you can actually take the head off if you needed to to clean it, but otherwise like it just moves around. So that's something I want to make sure it really dries out to make sure there's no moisture that gets trapped inside. But now I need to try to comb her hair out. So I'm just gonna kind of lay her down and comb out her hair best I can. So I just have my comb here and I'm gonna be starting just like with real hair, right? Um, at the bottom so that we're kind of working smartly to get any tangles or debris or anything out. When I was rinsing the conditioner out, I was trying to comb through the hair with my fingers to get the conditioner out, but it's not the same effect that you need to get with a comb, because this is actually dealing with the hair, you know. And I'm hoping I got all the dirt out, but there is anything, this should catch any final, I don't know, leftovers, I guess, or anything, but there shouldn't be, because she's been through a couple washes now. And I'm just using a light hand here. You can tell I'm not pulling through. The best advice I can give is as soon as you feel resistance, which is a knot, I'm kind of lifting up on my comb like this. I'm not I'm not pulling through any knots, right? And it's the same when I brush my own hair, you know. Just little light movements. And don't be afraid if one or two hairs do come out. Um that's very normal. If you get a whole bunch coming out, you might have a problem the root or base of the um, hair plugs in the toy, but a couple coming out on your comb is very normal, so don't worry too much. The ends are a little, a little bit rough. I'm hoping I don't have to trim anything, because I really don't want to do that. For some reason, her tail really went back to factory curl from the wash, but this part 
did not really. You can see we've got a little bit of a flippy at the end here, but that's not really the effect that I want for her hair, so I am going to attempt to curl it. Whether or not it responds well to the curls, it's hard to say. We'll see. I've had vintage toys that, like, their hair just curls so, so, so well. I've also had ones that, like, you take the curlers out and it's like nothing happened. It's just straight hair, so we'll see. Yeah, I do have a couple hairs that have come out here, but I'm not too worried about it. That's just kind of part of the process. As long as we're not pulling through on any of these knots, then that's fine. And it's much easier if you lay it out flat to deal with hair, well, really on any doll, like a Barbie or anything too. If you're just sitting with the toy and pulling on the toy, it can be a little harder on the toy. So I like to lay it flat like this, and you can kind of put fingers like this at the base to protect it and comb through like that. But then as you're finding it's getting combed out, you know, you can start to brush all the way through the hair like this, which is good. I'm not sure what's happening with her bangs here. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to style them completely, but I'm going to try to. I may have to kind of strap them down with something um, while they're drying. We'll see. I have a feeling they're going to want to stick straight up, though. Which kind of annoys me, but what are you going to do? Alright, let's brush through this little tail here. The tail is brushing through so much better than the hair, I guess her like mane, I guess you would call it. It feels weird calling it a mane because she's a kitty. Kitty cats don't really have manes like horses do, but you know, this is the trend. With the toys, they all have like a brushable part. I have a Keeper toy, um, which is an 80s toy, Keeper, K-E-Y-P-E-R. And she's a swan, and she has like a brushable hair, which makes no sense at all. But here we are. Toys don't make sense. They're fantastical. They live in a different universe than we do. So, in that universe, um, cats have long, brushable manes, and we just have to accept it. Alright, so, she's looking good. She's looking really good. Now we're going to start the styling process, which can be kind of fiddly. Um, if you're new to vintage toy restoration, um, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can just let your toy dry, air dry like this, and it would be totally fine and look totally good. So you don't need to stress. But for myself, I do want to style her hair simply because I know I can, so I want to try. It may not work out, but I want to try. So she's got these little bangs here. And I would like them to stay down like that. But I don't know how likely that is. I'm not going to worry about that in this second. Right now, all I'm going to worry about her tail. I can always add more water to her hair if it dries out and then get to work again. Don't need to worry about that. Alright, so I have my little clippies here, and I have my 
foam wire ties, which I've cut. Now, I do want to say, if you use these two, just be careful that you see how the wire can kind of come out. You just have to be careful. It, it shouldn't be a problem, but you don't want to lose it, right? So, just keep those here. Like I've said, you can use straws instead. It's really up to you. I'm going to try to follow the natural curl pattern that's happening here. I'll just lay her down for ease. And I'm going to separate this into sections just to make it easier to deal with and comb through the section and then I'm going to kind of follow the direction that the curl is going and I'm going to wrap it around this little foam tie like this just like it was um, a curler for your hair <laughs> now this is fiddly if you're feeling frustrated with this, don't give up. Just keep trying. I like using butterfly clips because um, they're just they're just easy. You can just easily readjust and clip the hair on like that, and voila, like that's gonna dry like that, and it'll look great. Some people use elastic bands or other things too. Bobby pins. I just find that leads to frustration on my end because these are really small toys and so when you're getting to that point where you're using tiny little bobby pins it just gets really fiddly so just do your best try to follow the curl pattern you don't want to fight against a hair pattern in a toy because that is set in he with heat at the factory and you can do anything you want to try to make that different but a lot of time it's just going to revert back to the factory mode all right one more curl here let's get this last one in It kind of feels like beauty shop <laughs> doing this, but it's like a nice little project to work on, making a toy beautiful again. It gives you a lot of sense of pride to take a toy that maybe had damage or was a little neglected in a past life and make it really beautiful again and like well loved and appreciated you know what, I'm gonna tighten this curl this is what's so great about the butterfly clips is like it's really easy to adjust them and make them tighter just like that, hold that tight right there and that's much better so that's our tail and we're gonna carefully let that sit and do this part of her mane now I'm going to put just a little bit of water in it because it's already drying a lot so I'll just wet my fingers a little bit and put a little bit more water you don't want it to be sopping wet when you do this it will set better if it is wet. So just like that, give it another quick little brush through. And the reason I like to use um, what we call a rat tail comb, which is this long plastic end on the comb, is because it makes it easy for you to section the hair like this. Just like that parting the hair into sections. So, I'm going to do this. Because this hair is longer, 
sometimes that can make it a little bit trickier. Sometimes the shorter hair is harder. It really depends on the toy. It's all about wrapping those ends, though. Just like so. See, this is where my many years of pin curling my hair comes in handy because it's essentially the same thing on a toy. Just, just practice is what helps with these types of things. You may find it easier to practice on bigger toys with longer hair and then as you go, it may become easier and easier for you. So if you have trouble with it, don't give up. Keep trying. I need to make sure that I'm giving myself enough because I only have a couple more clips. So, let's do this carefully and smartly. Is smartly a word? I don't know. We're gonna do it smartly, though. So, in terms of drying time for a toy like this, um, it can take anywhere from an hour to a couple of hours to dry properly. As a rule of thumb, though, I generally will give my toys a good 24 hours before I rush in to take the curlers out just for safety's sake. Because the worst thing is to take them out too early and the hair hasn't dried yet. Because then you feel very foolish, you know, you feel like, oh, I have to do it all over again. So, give yourself time. No need to rush. Perfection cannot be rushed, they say. Sometimes you may find it can also be helpful to ask someone to hold the toy while you're putting little curlers in because the trick is having it stay still while you're doing this. So that can be the time when having a friend can really help with a project like this. Or you can just figure out a way to completely secure it to your work area. She looks a little silly right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. She, she does look a little silly. She looks like how I look when I have curlers in my hair. And she's got her little bangs there. I think they may stick up a bit. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do too, too much about that. Although I may try something. Let me see. I'm putting a little bit of water in her bangs. Just a little bit. And combing them through. And kind of sticking them down to her face. And then I'm going to press this piece of paper towel down. Like so. And I'm going to tape it on the back to secure it. Hopefully this works. I've done it in the past, but every toy is different. So we will see if this works for our girl. It is a mystery even to me. Right, we're going to let her sit like this for as long as possible um, so that she gets the maximum effects of all 
all these different hair press methods. I'm excited to see how she looks. Before we get to the next step though, I want to show you something. While we are waiting for Miss Mimi's hair and everything to dry, indulge me if you will, I put together a little album on my iPad here of pictures that I pulled largely from the Little Pretty Wikipedia page, but also from um, some eBay listings as well, because I really want to show you guys more about this toy in the context of pretty much how it would have felt to be a little kid seeing this toy both in ads and in store. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So this is the beautiful lettering that the logo had. I just love this. It's got this like lovely ribbon and it's completely rendered. Because this is from the very late 80s, early 90s, I have to sit here and wonder, like, did somebody render all of these letters by hand? What digital components were involved? I love looking at that and thinking about it, and I wish I could be, like, a fly on the wall knowing more about that. So a lot of the pictures that I'm going to show you are from um, the Mattel dealer's catalogs. One thing I want you to really pay attention to, because I find it just so interesting, is the way that this toy in the dealer's catalogs seems so differently presented than, for example, um, the packaging for the toy. So here's what I'm talking about. This is like the dealer's catalog pages. Um, this particular page is for perfume pets, and you'll notice here are some of the pretty kitties and puppies, and we have them kind of displayed in a park setting, almost surrounded by a forest with trees, and these are clearly set up with like paper craft, right? But um, to compare, here's an example of the actual packaging of this toy. This is a really, really like glitz and glamour packaging. It's really cute. It's very girly. So I can't help but wonder, here's another example as well with the Perfume Kitties gift set. Like this is so, so cute and they really went with like a very neutral um, background for the dealer's catalog pictures that mainly feature very simple paper craft, the trees, blue background. Um, I just find it really interesting. Another situation that I wish I could be a fly on the wall for. So anyway, let's let's look at this in order. In this picture, we have the perfume pets. So it says, the perfume pets, kitties, and puppies filled pretty park full of sweet flower scents. Each kitty and puppy comes in a pretty perfume bottle with her own special flower scent. Includes comb and hair ribbon too. So here's like the little perfume bottle, right here, there's a puppy, a kitty, they're all really cute. So the molds of all of these, um, or not all of them, I should say, rather, the original molds for Pretty Kitty were made in 1989, but they were released in the years 1990 and 1991, and after that, they pretty much stopped making um, there were, I don't know, six or seven different lines within Pretty Kitty. So, like, this is the Perfume Pets line. These are the Polished Paws. Then this was a set of Pretty Kitties and Puppies. There's always a couple puppies <laughs> that had, um, sort of, um, uh, stuff on their paws to look like nail polish. And a beauty mark, too, that when you put, like, um, cold water on, the color would appear. Do you guys remember, um, having
having toys like that that like would change with water temperature that was really big in the early 90s especially um, I'm sure that it's still a thing because that's how toys go these um, you can see some of them have really long hair and some of them have shorter hair and they have like their little brushes and so on and this is yeah, they have like the really curly hair here here's another example of the polished paws and then this little like section of the advertisement it shows like a child doing the actual little nail polish parts and they all just look so cute they're styled really really beautifully with the little bow so that's kind of where i'm hoping they can go now i love these ones these ones are so much more fun to me these are some of the ones from the glitter and grow line so these ones you could like make their hair longer you could like um, pull it out slightly and it would like magically grow and they also had little strands of glitter in their hair which made it very sparkly um, and pretty and shiny look their little tail could become longer I never really understood if you wanted their hair to be shorter how you would like put it back into the vinyl of the toy I don't know I never had one of these so I really don't know that much about the advertisement is so much more sparkly and cute in this one which really I feel reflects the toy itself um, these are some of the ones that included like a little toy plastic picture frame um, look at this caption it says mmm smells pretty because they come with perfume I don't know what they would have smelled like it was such a big trend at this time too to have scented toys uh, especially in like the late 80s the scented toys were such a big deal some of um, the scented toys from around this time if you have a good condition one you can still smell it think about um, strawberry shortcake or cabbage patch kids uh, they still many of them in good condition they have that smell those iconic smells you know I personally love the smell of uh, the original scent of the strawberry shortcakes it smells so cute to me okay so this is the little pretty baby assortment um, there you can see there's like one with a pram there's one with like a rocker baby bipsy kitty um, baby prancer kitty baby waggle puppy the names on these are it's just so perfectly a uh, time capsule of 1991 I feel um, the babies are really cute I personally have not seen one of the baby toys on the market myself um, I'm sure they're out there and I'm sure you can find them but I have not been so lucky they're really cute to me um, oh, these are the, which ones are these? The, um, show-offs. These are the show-offs. So, in this line, you're kind of thinking of a theme that's kind of like 80s hair, you know, like metal a little bit with the makeup. Like, this is really, really, like, late 80s glitz and glam, and you gotta love it. It's very gem these pretty kitties and puppies have like a lot of makeup on and their hair is huge and look like this one apparently is like we're thinking like a, maybe a pageant kitty or something she has a little trophy and a crown um whatever she's winning i don't know this one too so these are like and they have a little bow tie right they're show off kitties whatever that meant for the time I love these ones they're really cute and you can see the perfume pets how they would kind of fit into these little plastic perfume bottles really cute the poses on these puppies is pretty different than the kitties you can see they're up on their back legs kind of like a little show dog 
in that pose. And a lot of the kitties are kind of like sitting or this one, for example, has a little paw raised. So they kind of have a little bit of a difference in that way. And then just going back to, I personally just love seeing what the original packaging looked like. It brings back so much nostalgia for me to think about like how it would feel when maybe I would get to go to like Kmart or Zellers with my mom and she would like be grocery shopping or something and I would get to go look in the toy aisle and think about what I would maybe like to save up, you know, my my money for. Although I wasn't um, personally able to witness this particular toy in the store um, because I was not alive at the time, um, it still has that vibe from when I was a kid. The packaging's very similar, um, and so it brings me back to that feeling of seeing these toys in the store and the type of toy that I was really interested in. So I love seeing that. And this one is lilac scented and her name is Lily. You can see the packaging is a little different on these two, but um, the vibe is still the same. The cardboard is meant to look like a little basket that's woven around the top. And then that's where the little um, the cardboard part would hang on wire. So, yeah, and this is the back of the cardboard. And you know what it's like when you look at the back of your toy and you see all of the other ones that you could collect in the set. So right here we have Lily. And I really want you guys to look at this um, art that's on the back. Personally, I love the textures of it. Whoever um, illustrated this really did it very lovingly, it seems, or at least that's the impression I get looking at it. There's all of these cute little sparkles on them. Um, I love the kind of refl like reflection and refraction of the little um, perfume bottles. Now, we in real life know that these are like little plastic perfume bottles, but in the eyes of a kid, they feel like, you know, they're like a fancy perfume bottle and that's how they're rendered. In this illustration, they're kind of like, maybe what it would feel like to be a fancy grown-up and have a beautiful glass perfume bottle and playing make-believe like that. And look at how these little characters are just kind of interacting and playing around and being goofy. And I think that kind of captures the magic of being a little kid, playing with a toy like this. You're still at that age where you're playing pretend and making little, you know, made-up scenarios with your toys and having fun, but maybe you sometimes also like to pretend that you have fancy grown-up perfume and that, like, maybe you're getting ready to go out somewhere um, in your games as well, so... I really love that illustration. I think it's so pretty. And here's the cardboard backing of another one. We have uh, that same illustration here, but it's just um, displayed a little differently. Then they have a child who's smelling the perfume. It's such a tiny bottle of perfume, isn't it? It's like so small. Like, I can't help but look at this and think there must have been like three applications, basically. And if this little kid was anything like I was, they probably just opened up the bottle and smelled it sometimes, but wanted to save it for a special occasion, and then it would probably all dry out. That's the kind of kid I was. <laughs> These are so cute, though. And this one says, two scented kitties and a real fragrance for you. So this was like the gift set. So, this one I wanted to show you, even though this particular set that we're looking at did not get released. So this is the pretty, or little pretty, mommy and baby kitty set. This 
this set did not actually get released, which is interesting because like I showed you, there were sets that were baby kitties basically, right? With little accessories and whatnot. So I'm not really exactly sure why they didn't actually release this um, set with the mommy kitty and baby kitty. I'm sure it's probably a really boring reason, like maybe they weren't selling the way they wanted them to, or I don't know, they just went in a different direction, or maybe when they did focus group testing, people just didn't really respond to them. I don't know, who knows? But they're really cute. I wish I could have one of these sets. Now, I particularly wanted to show you this picture. This is that very same mommy cat from the photo before, but I just love how they have styled her hair here. And I'm not saying that I think I can get mine to look like this. I really don't know. But she's so, so cute. So this is like the goal. I'm not going to hold myself to that standard, but like she's really cute. So this is our inspiration today, and hopefully we can get there. Yeah, if these toys look familiar to you at all, um, or maybe you just kind of can't place where you may know them from, a lot of toys that came out around this time had similar concepts. Like, My Little Pony came out around this time too, and you see that these have these cutie marks on their hip here, that's, you know, the My Little Pony thing too. They're made out of very similar material, and you know, they have the brushable hair. Um, a lot of toys came out around this time with the same material base, very similar paint on the face molds too. So, if it seems familiar to you, maybe you played with one or had one, but it also may just be that um, parts of them seem familiar to you too. So I would encourage you to uh, maybe poke around on some of the toy Wikipedia pages because you might come across some toys from when you were little, which is always a really fun and nice feeling too. So let's see how we're doing with Mimi. I'm going to be able to tell just by touching the parts of the hair that we can feel to see everything feels pretty dry, so I'm going to go ahead and free her from this. And this is just paper towel, so that'll just come off really easy. You get to see again, Mimi. I'm not expecting huge results from this method, but sometimes it can work, so... Oh, look, we got a little bit of curl in the bangs. They were sticking straight up before, so I will take that. That's good for me. Let's take these curls out. Now, there's only so much that um, this curling method can do because we're kind of at the whim of whatever the factory setting for Mimi was, but you'd be surprised by how good of a curl you can get. And keeping in mind, we did not put any product in this, right? This is just water and curlers. That's it. Now, this looks really cute to me. I am going to run a comb through that in a second here. I want you to just keep in mind, though, that the more you brush these curls, because there's no product or anything, the more we brush them, the more the curl may come out or disappear. So we want to kind of comb through it, but not do too much. Her tail is looking quite fabulous, I have to say. Everything turned out really well. I'm going to give her a little comb right in the front here. Just get these flyaways out of the way. I think her bangs look really good. You know, I 
knew they were going to stick up to some extent, but they're really cute, I feel. And let's try to just kind of make this all into one really pretty section. I want, ideally, these curls to blend together. And like I said, the more we brush it, the more a curl will come out. So we're just going to kind of give her a little nice swirl right there. Although I may change that slightly because I do want to put a little ribbon in her hair. Sometimes you just have to be kind of fiddly at this part to make things look as cute as possible. Looks pretty good if you ask me. And I'll give her, her tail a little brush here. I don't feel too nervous to be a little more liberal with how I brush the tail because even when this was wet, it was quite curled because of the factory setting, but I want it to look really polished. So I'm going to try to encourage all of those little curls to sort of swing together like this. There we go, it's kind of one little ringlet now. But I do think I would like to put a little bow in her hair, so let me section some of this off. Maybe we'll just put a little bow around this one part so she kind of has a little sort of a side pony, but not quite. What I'm going to do is section the hair and now put this little clip right here and put the rest of her hair in a clip just so it's kind of sectioned off like that. And now we'll get some ribbon. I have quite the assortment of ribbon. So let's choose. I think I, hmm, maybe not that one. This one, I think this one with the bobbles is a little too much. This one's pretty cute. It has kind of a little sparkly thing going on. Just kind of wonderfully 80s slash 90s. So let me just take a piece. It doesn't need to be too big. piece like that. I have a whole box full of ribbons, as you can imagine. So, it was fun to pick one out for Mimi. I'm actually going to take this out because this is just going to get in the way. Alright, now my bow tying skills will be put to the test to some extent. First we do a little knot like this. We want the sparkly part to be sticking out. I am a lot better at tying bows when I don't have uh, long nails, I have to say. It's a little harder with these, but I will do my best. And when you got your bow, you can kind of just mess with it a little bit and, you know, turn it around to make it look cute. I'm actually going to trim these little ends here to make shorter and cuter like that and then I can just kind of and we'll 
just to take that little clip out there. Now, some people, um, when they're styling their toys like this, some people will say, you know, you can use hair gel, you can use mousse, whatever. Um, you can. Personally, I find that using a product meant for actual human hair in toys or doll hair tends to weigh the hair down quite a bit. Um, it's all personal preference, though. Some people swear by it. Um, I just prefer to use, like, no hairspray or anything like that just kind of style it with my fingers, but you will find what's best for you if, you know, you start on this hobby or journey. It just depends on what you like and what feels comfortable for you to use. And I think it also depends on um, how much you plan to handle your toy afterwards, you know? If you plan on maybe playing with the toy or giving it to someone else to play with, um, I would definitely not put gel or hairspray in the toy, but, you know, it depends. Some people even use, like, glue, different types of adhesive, because they want the hair to be pretty non-pliable, basically. They don't want it to move. Um, that, that can be tricky if you're new to this because, you know, once it's set, it's set. So, I don't recommend using adhesive of any kind on your first couple tries anyway, but I like just using just water because the hair feels really soft and nice. And I think that she looks so cute. She's got her nice little bow. So here is our finished little pretty kitty Mimi. She looks quite dazzling, if you ask me. I'm really happy with how this restoration turned out. It's definitely one of... Um, the most successful I've had, which is very encouraging. I, I just think she looks great, don't you think? I hope that this video inspires you to maybe give a little love to an older toy that maybe you come across in your travels or that maybe one from your childhood that you can breathe new life into and maybe you can also spend the afternoon or the evening giving a toy a little spa day. Thank you so much for watching my darlings and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.